We now say that we're joined by the Armed Forces Minister, uh, James Heapy. Uh, very good morning to you, Minister. Thanks for joining us on Breakfast. Um, look, you'll have read the papers this morning, almost all of them leading with the nuclear threats being made by President Putin yesterday. Um, are we taking these threats seriously? If anything we've learned in the last week that we underestimate Putin at our peril? Well, um, yes and no, to, to give you a, a, a sort of nuanced answer. No, in that... I don't think that Putin really means this. I think this is uh, a distraction, frankly, against uh, the reality that the ground campaign in Ukraine is going very badly well, for him. They're taking far more that he would invite losses than Minister, they Minister, I'm just expected. trying to say, make the point that you say he mightn't really mean this. We all sat back and how many people said, invade Ukraine, he doesn't really mean it, doesn't really mean it, but he did. Well, Eamon, let me answer the question, please. Uh, so I, I think he's using this to distract. I think he's using it as a uh, as a way of trying to kind of say to the Russian people that there's an existential challenge from NATO, which, of course, there isn't. Um, but on the other hand, yes, we are ready in so much as we don't bring our nuclear forces to readiness. Neither does the United States, neither does France, the incredible submariners who crew our nuclear submarines armed with the UK's nuclear deterrent are at sea 24 hours a day, seven days a week, week after week, month after month, year after year. They just silently go about their business, invisible to the world, always ready to be the ultimate guarantee of the UK's sovereignty. So um, I, I don't think that President Putin means this. I think that this is, is a distraction against something that's gone very, very badly wrong for him in Ukraine. But the Royal Navy, on behalf of the United Kingdom, ensures that the UK is ready every second of every day. It's a strange world, though, isn't it, when, when the British government is saying UK citizens with combat experience should and can legally go and fight in a country that's under threat from a nuclear power. Um, it, it, do you find that frustrating as the armed forces minister that we aren't able to get our boots on the ground and defend democracy more appropriately? Well, there's, there's, there's two bits to that question as well. I mean, on the, on the question about whether... British citizens with military experience should be going to Ukraine. I would say not. Uh, the travel advice is so that British morning, citizens, for whatever purpose, that should not be going. Embassy. I, I'm, I'm aware. And, and I think that the Defence Secretary this morning uh, and me on your show right now are just offering that, you know, war is, war is brutal. It's not the sort of thing that you jump on a plane to go and do uh, for the fun of it. The people that you are seeing picking up Kalashnikov rifles in Kyiv today are doing so because they face an existential threat and they are desperate and that is inspirational. But I don't think we should be encouraging British citizens to go to Ukraine uh, to fight. What they can do if they want to stand up for freedom uh, and democracy is go to their local recruiting office and join the British Army, Royal Navy and Royal Air Force, where they would be very welcome, both full time and part time as reservists. Um, to, your, to your other point about uh, whether or not the UK is doing enough and whether the West should be doing more. I mean, you know, what the Ukrainians are asking for is air defense and anti-tank weapon systems. Well, the UK donated thousands of anti-tank weapon systems a few weeks ago. We have plans to deliver more and more of lots of other things that they've been asking for as well. Now we're in the combat phase of operations. We can't be as open with you as we would like to be about what exactly that is and where and when it will it will go. But um, other countries have now rallied to the flag as well. Ben Wallace convened a donor meeting on Friday night in which a lot of other European countries who had previously not been willing to do military aid have now been willing to do so. And so, you know, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles are flowing into Ukraine, anti-tank missiles from around Europe. Um, you know, the Ukrainians have stood their ground brilliantly. They've employed the UK weapon systems, the NLAW anti-tank missiles um, that we gave them to incredible effect, taking out a very large number of Russian armoured vehicles. And now the rest of Europe is joining us in giving more. But I, I don't think that we should be committing NATO troops because mm. that's effectively to declare war on Russia.
OK, but are, are those the, those weapons that you describe flowing into the country? I mean, we heard reports this morning that some of the weapons had been smuggled in. It's a hugely difficult situation to get all of that hardware into the country at the moment. And of course, we heard Zelensky over the weekend saying, I need ammunition, not a ride. And, and is our help getting to the people who need it? Um, no I can't answer that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Can you say to me, uh, Minister, um, you, you were talking about there um, what would be tantamount to declaring war on Russia. Say Russia continues with its military exercises, its submarines off the coast of Wales and, and Ireland, its uh, reconnaissance aircraft flying over Scotland. Would your response now be different, stronger or not? Well, it's already very robust. I mean, make no mistake, the quick reaction alert uh, RAF jets that are on station at RAF Lossiemouth in the north of Scotland and RAF, RAF Coningsby uh, in uh, East Anglia, they are armed. And every single day they are at immediate notice to go up into uh, the United Kingdom's airspace and to protect our airspace from unidentified uh, or, or enemy aircraft. So um, that just carries on. You know, the number we, we see routinely flights coming around the high north that the QRA is crashed out to fly against. It. Very often you see reports in the newspapers of sonic booms because we've given them permission to fly above the speed of sound across the UK to get up there and intercept. Um, so that's kind of business as usual. We meet people with a pretty robust response when they try and enter our airspace at any, at any time. And similarly, the Royal Navy operates a fleet-ready escort that, again, is an armed warship um, that will always go out to escort any uh, non-allied warship through UK waters. Um, we have all sorts of things that we use day in, day out to, truck, to track Russian submarines in the North Atlantic alongside our allies in NATO. So, uh, you know, when it comes to activity around the homeland, there's, there's nothing exceptional that is happening from the Russians. There's nothing exceptional that we are doing in response because it's just what the MOD does. But 999 days in a thousand, it's not newsworthy. Um, what's going on in Ukraine, that clearly is exceptional. And that's why people are working day and night in this building to make sure that we can get all of the support to the Ukrainians that we possibly can, and that we are coordinating okay. and facilitating the delivery of support from other countries as well. Look, we're almost out of time. I just have to ask you about visas, a change in position from the UK in the last few hours. Do you think we've gone far enough? We're still lagging behind the EU who've said that Ukrainian refugees are welcome for up to three years. We're only allowing uh, close immediate relatives to UK citizens, uh, Ukrainians living in the UK access to the UK. Should we extend our hand a bit further? Well, firstly, the offer that's already been made is in itself quite a generous one, given the size of the Ukrainian diaspora in the UK. That, that covers a lot of people in its own right. But my instinct is that this is an evolving area of policy. I think you've heard from uh, from Downing Street last night that there was an announcement. I think you've seen that there's an indication that they're still um, working through what more could and should be done. Uh, and when Parliament sits this afternoon, I suspect that there will be uh, a statement on this that will answer your questions further. But the PM on Saturday night, when he was up at RAF Bryce Norton, visiting the amazing air crews that are delivering uh, this military aid to, um, to Ukraine, uh, he was asked about this and he was very clear that, the, of course, the UK will take refugees. We have a fine tradition of doing so, most recently shown through the way that we've taken in so many tens of thousands of Afghans. Okay.